Hey guys, today we will continue in our digital logic series and we will look at timing analysis. Timing analysis is really important. For example, if you have clock in your design and you want to find out what's the maximum frequency of the clock for your design to still work properly, accommodating all the delays, you need to do timing analysis. So today we will look at timing analyzer in quarters called TimeQuesta and we will look at how to set up clock constraints. I will be working with this tutorial called Using TimeQuesta Timing Analyzer and this tutorial is part of uh, FPG Academy Tutorials. You can find it here and it's under the tutorials. So let's begin. We will be working with TimeQuesta Timing Analyzer as I have said and we will look at uh, the timing constraints and how to get the timing information. Timing analysis is a process of analyzing delays under which the circuit operates reliably. So every gate in your design has some delay and you need to uh, find out if the delay will give you some problems with the design or not. So one of the examples is, for example, finding the maximum clock frequency. So to operate correctly, the clock period has to be long enough to accommodate the delay on the longest path in the circuit. So we assume that the clock to queue and setup times for each flip-flop are one nanosecond. So uh, clock to queue, that's a delay for the input to show on the output in the flip-flop. And setup time, that's a, that's a time for which the input has to be stable. We can look at this diagram here. And you can see we have clock here, input and output of the flip-flop here. So the flip-flop will register the input on the rising edge. So here it registers the input here, it sees that it's zero. Here it registers the input and it sees that it's one. And then it will show the output on the queue. So we have two uh, constraints here. We have setup time and hold time and also clock to queue. Setup time and hold time are the times for the data to be stable. So we register the input here and we need the data to be stable for some time before and also after the register. So after the registering the here. So the time before is called setup time and the time after is called hold time. And then we also have a clock to queue delay and that's a delay between the input registering and outputting it on the queue. So we see that the input here is one on the rising edge of the clock, but it takes some time for the queue to update and you can see it updates here. So that's the uh, clock to queue delay. So we have setup time, hold time and uh, clock to queue. Let's go back to the tutorial. So here we have the clock to queue delay for these four flip-flops. And then you have one nanosecond delay for each of the end gates. So the longest path here is this path. So it's clock to queue for uh, these two flip-flops. Then you have three end gates. That's here, three end gates. And then setup time for the final flip-flop. And if you count this, the delay is five nanoseconds. And if you calculate the frequency, you find out that the maximum frequency uh, for this circuit is 200 megahertz. So if it goes above, it will not, uh, it will have some problems with the delays. So you need to, uh, you need to work with the frequency of the clock here. Computing the longest delays in a circuit and comparing these delays to the clock period is a basic function of timing analyzer. So we don't have to calculate this, these delays manually but the timing analyzer will do it will do it for us and we will just get the output so that's the function of the timing analyzer so for example uh, so we want uh, we want this circuit to operate at 250 megahertz we know that the maximum is 200 megahertz for this circuit so it will not work but we can look at figure two. So that's this design here. And the new design will work with 200 megahertz. So if you look at it, the, uh, they changed here the 
end gate here, it still operates the same. It will still give you the same result, but the delay here is instead of three end gates in a in a sequence here, it just have two. The maximum is two end gates, so it will be shorter the delay. So that's a one example of how you can optimize the design for the for the frequency to increase. And now we will look at one example. Uh, it will look like this. The example, we will have three registers and they will just add to each other. And then we will show the output here uh, as a sum here, as a signal sum. So let's look at this. Uh, I have this code here already in my Quarters project and I have compiled this project as well. So create a new Quarters Prime project and compile. And let's look at the results. So open the time quest timing analyzer section of the compilation report and click on the clocks item to select it. So that's here. We have timing analyzer and we have clocks. And you can see that we have our input clock here. That's our input here. And the period is set to one, which will result in frequency 1000 megahertz. And that's a default frequency for your design, for your for quarters. So if you don't set up any clock frequency, the default will be 1000 megahertz. And that's done by quarters by default. So that's what they say here. And you can see that it didn't meet the it didn't meet the requirements here. So it says that it, uh, it's, it's in red and you can see that there is some slack. We will look at what slack means in the future, but you can see it's negative value. So it will not uh, work with this frequency. Select the command report timing in the time quest UI. This action opens the report timing dialog shown in figure six. Click the drop down arrow in the uh, from clock item and select the clock signal. Okay, let's uh, do that. So we will click on the report timing here. So report timing. And here we will select from clock, we will select our clock and then report timing. And it will show us this uh, window. So here, it will show us this window and the slack value, which we have seen just now, that's this value here, setup slack here. The slack value represents the difference between the clock period constraint and the path delay. A positive slack means that the delay is smaller than the constraint and a ne negative slack represents a delay that is larger than the constraint. So we have set up some constraint. In this case, we have set up 1000 megahertz clock frequency and the slack will tell us what's the difference between the current design and the time constraint. So in our case, it lags behind. So that's not good. And it lags one nanosecond behind. So if you look at here, data required here. So this is when the data was required and you can see this is when the data arrived. So we want the data to arrive at this time or earlier, but it arrived later. So it will not work correctly. And there is some way how you can calculate the slag here. So it shows some delay. So if this number would be positive, it means that it arrived earlier than it was supposed to, and that would be okay. But if it arrives later, this will be negative, and that's not okay. So now we will create a new constraint with different time clock. We will change it to period four nanoseconds. So that will result in 250 megahertz, if I'm not uh, wrong. So constraints create clock. Constraints create clock and here we will call it some the clock. So I will call it clock and I will set four nanoseconds. 
If you want 50 megahertz, you would change this to 20 nanoseconds and so on. Then if you want to change when the rising edge will occur and the falling, you can set it, set it up here, but we don't want to do that. And then we want to look at our targets and we want to select our clock. So our clock here, press OK and run. Now you can see there is some yellow color and that's because we want to run this again. So first we will save the constraint that we have just made to SDC file. So you can go here and you can go here and press write SDC file. We will call it, we will name it like this and press OK. And Note that the quarters will by default try to locate and use the SDC file whose name file uh, whose file name matches the project name. So we have called the SDC file the same way uh, the same way as our project is called. And the setup clock is now out of date. That's why it's, it was uh, yellow or orange. So we need to press regenerate. So let's look at here and here I will press regenerate and now you can see uh, the it's not red anymore and you can see the slack is positive number. It's two nanoseconds, which means that the data required was here, but the data arrived earlier, two nanoseconds earlier. So that's uh, now, now it will work. So we know that if the, if the period is 4 nanoseconds, if the frequency is 250 megahertz, then it will work. And so we have done this. Regenerate and you can see the, you can see this is when the data was required and this is when it arrived. The 4 nanoseconds timing constraint will cause the Quartz Prime optimizing algorithm to make different decisions from those made when the default 1 nanosecond constraint was used. This is really interesting. So, in particular, the optimization algorithms will likely take less time to execute because once the generated circuit has sufficient positive slack to meet the constraint, the algorithms can terminate. What this means is if you are compiling your design and you have some really strict constraint. It will try to look for a way to meet this constraint. But if you set up, for example, 250 megahertz, it will once it finds some some uh, some one like once it finds some uh, some way to satisfy this constraint, it will stop the compilation. It will give you the result. So it might take less time for this constraint to for this algorithm to operate. So it might uh, shorten the time for your compilation to be done. And that's uh, how you can set up the clock constraint. And now we will look at how to do this in the graphical user interface. So you can do this by, I will close this window now. And we don't need to save this since we have already done that. So I will press no. And I will look at our, and here, Maybe not. I will. So here I will go to settings and timing analyzer and I will add our SDC file that we have just created. Apply. OK. And we can look at the, the, uh, the file. So this is the time constraint. We can see that we have created clock that is with period four and there are some set clock uncertainty. And that's so this is the content of the file so you can even set it up manually and now we will look at the graphical user interface so that's another way how to do it so we will go to tools and timing questa timing analyzer so tools and timing analyzer here and it will open the same same uh, window and we will press create timing netlist to create a timing netlist which will be used to perform the analysis, then read SDC file and update timing netlist. So first we will press this button here, create timing netlist. Then we will read SDC file 
this file that we have created and then update and report setup summary so here we will press report setup summary you can see the slack here two nanoseconds we have already seen it before and then you can here press report timing here you cho choose from clock to clock and press report timing there are some more the clock signal at the source flip-flops and the clock signal at the destination flip-flop so that was the from clock and to clock you can see it here from clock that's the clock from the source flip-flops and two clock that's the destination flip-flops so that's here two clock and there are some other settings you can set for example the targets uh, if you want to look at the setup time hold time that's those are the times that i have explained here so setup time and hold time and so on other options you can read it here if you want to so if you set up the targets you can focus only on certain parts you can only on certain part of the design and so on so you can read it here and yeah the tcl command at the end so that's this command here it's the command that will be run so the command that will be executed and yeah we have done this And you can go to assignment settings, time questa time analyzer, and adding the SDC file to the time questa time analyzer settings, and then it will report the constraint when you are when you compile the design. So I've already done this. You go to so I'll close this and I will go to assignment settings here under time analyzer. I have added this file, and now if I compile this, so in the previous you could see that it was read. It didn't meet the requirements here. You can see it was slack negative one sec nanosecond. So I will do the compilation again. And the compilation is done. So we can look at and we can see that it met the it met the setup or uh, or the constraints. So we can see slack 1.9 nanoseconds here. And we can look at the hold summary. So that's for, for the hold time. We can look at the max frequency. So our max frequency is 480 megahertz and it's still red because there are some un unconstrained parts so you can look at the comment here what it says and but it uh, it worked with this frequency of 250 megahertz so this is all for the timing analysis i hope you found it helpful and uh, we have finished this tutorial also there is some note about multiple clock signals so if you are in your design if it has multiple clocks it is important to apply constraints to each clock before performing time analysis so you need to add the constraint for each of the clock and that's all for today's uh, tutorial i hope you found it helpful and i will see you in the next one bye